want to say good evening uh, to everyone, uh, those who are watching and may watch later. Um, I am James Porter, one of the associate ministers at Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church, Millport, Alabama, Pastor Reverend Benny Henry. Um, I thank God for each and every one of you, um, the members uh, of Mount Olive and our, our friends, our church friends that uh, that we fellowship with. Uh, today is a good day. God has allowed us to be here. Uh, another opportunity at life. Um, another opportunity uh, to study his word. Um, he has blessed us and brought us this far. Um, and I want you to remember that God is still in control. Uh, things look uh, sometimes a little bleak. Um, you look around and there's so much going on with the um, pandemic and um, with the weather and uh, with the hurricane and uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we see a lot that's going on, but God is still in charge. He's in charge of all of our lives. And I thank him for each and every one of you uh, tonight as we study God's word. Uh, and again, I'm coming from Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church, Millport, Alabama, Pastor Reverend Benny Henry. Um, and so we're going to be studying tonight um, in our lesson. It's a different one from last month. Uh, Reverend James Henry um, taught it, taught it very well. Um, talked about loneliness and uh, and it was something we need, uh, a, a subject that we don't talk about much. And so tonight we're going to, this month, we're going to start on something different. As always, we, we start out with prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank you, uh, Master, for this day. We thank you for all that you have done, Father. You brought us this far. And Father, we're praying uh, for strength, Father. We realize that this is a world seem like it's in turmoil, Father, but we know that you are able. And Father, we're praying for uh, healing today, Father. We're praying for those who may be bereaving. Uh, Father, we're praying for uh, our little children uh, while they're at school, Father, uh, praying for their protection uh, from this virus, Father. We're praying for those who may be in the hospitals tonight, we're praying for the hospital workers, Father. Uh, some of those who have uh, gotten burned out, Father, we're, we're praying for them and their families and praying for the teachers uh, that teach our students and uh, all of those that are involved, Father. We ask that you bless uh, Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church and all those who are listening in tonight, Father. And we will be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Again, I thank God for each and every one of you. Tonight, we're we're going to be studying, and again, uh, we're coming from in our study journey into overcoming, rising above life's toughest problems, and so in this month we're. One of the tough problems we have is discouragement. And so we're going to be talking about defeating discouragement. Um, and you, you know with what's going on, uh, as I was saying earlier, that, you know, it's easy for us um, to get discouraged with so much is going on today, uh, and all of us have had some discouragement um, somewhere uh, in our lives. And so we're going to be talking about defeating discouragement. Uh, the word discouragement comes from 
taken from the root word courage, actually. Uh, discouragement comes from the word courage. Uh, the prefix dis means the opposite of. So discouragement is the opposite of courage. Uh, when we are discouraged, we have lost the motivation to press forward. Uh, the, the mountain, so to speak, seems too steep when we're discouraged. Uh, the valley seemed to be too dark. Uh, the, the battle is too fierce uh, when we're dis discouraged. Uh, we lose the courage to continue on. In many places throughout Scripture, God commands his people to take courage. Uh, when God selected Joshua to replace Moses as a uh, leader of the Israelites, some of his first words to Joshua were, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And so we all have to deal with discouragement. Uh, and here in our lesson, it said that discouragement is one of the most effective weapons in the evil one's arsenal. And the evil ones, we know we're talking about Satan. Uh, you may be discouraged right now. Some of some may be discouraged right now and, and uh, because of adversity uh, in your life. You may be discouraged uh, at this present time. Um, it might be a health crisis, crisis in your life. You may be dealing with uh, a health problem that uh, you dealt with for a long time or, or something may be new or and, and, and it's a, a crisis for you it's, and, and it can, it can cause discouragement. Uh, some may be having a, a, a marriage crisis right now. Uh, some may be having a parental crisis, uh, having trouble, uh, with their children. Uh, and certainly some may be having a financial crisis, um, where, you're having trouble financially in 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 uh paying your bills and and things come up sometimes that uh that financially we're not we have a problem uh with being able to control or you may have a career crisis uh again this pandemic has affected us in a lot of ways it has affected us in, in, in many ways and even in careers. And I was just reading the other day how many uh, uh, medical workers who have uh, just burned out. They burned out and, 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 and needed to take a break. And, uh, and so their career crisis where there's some uh, that, uh, you may be struggling with at your job. Well, is this safe enough? Or are they doing the safe things here at my job and worry about my family when I go home? So whatever it is, we know that in this life we have discouragements. Um, and we all have bouts with discouragement. We, uh, we are discouraged. We feel like uh, giving up because we are disheartened, uh, maybe dispirited, and seem like we're defeated. And, and I would love to tell you that uh, being discouraged is just a one-time thing. Uh, uh, it's just a one-and-done thing. But uh, we know in this life, um, there's other times that we may be discouraged. However, the more we try to live for the Lord, that 
more we will have to battle discouragement because it is the devil's choice weapon. Satan knows that if you can be discouraged, and again, discouraged is the opposite of courage. Uh, the prefix dis make it the opposite of courage. So Satan knows if if he can get you discouraged, then you're not going to uh, do the things that God wants you to do, or you're going to uh, put them off in doing what the Lord has commanded you to do. And so that's one of his choice weapons is for discouragement. That's why over and over again, we read in the Old Testament, be not dismayed. Uh, the New Testament uh, uses words like weary and faint to describe discouragement. Uh, worry means to, weary means to fail. And then faint actually means to relax. And so the New Testament uses words like weary and faint to describe discouragement. And so here in our lesson, it says, what wonderful promise about discouragement does God give us in Galatians uh, 6 and 9? And it says in using the King James Version, Galatians 6 and 9, it said, and let us not be weary. In well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. That text there addresses uh, the universal problem of becoming discouraged. See, oftentimes uh, we may not be recognized for some efforts that we do, some things that we do. Uh, man is a lot of times is, isn't going to recognize you. Uh, and that may cause some discouragement for you. Uh, but I want you to know, don't feel devalued or minimized, um, as if you're not doing anything. God knows about what you do. Uh, it, it, it might seem like results never come. Um, you may pray and pray and and and, and it's as if nothing uh, is happening. Uh, you may try to walk a, a life pleasing to God and, and you see others who cheat and cut corners and, and seem to be very successful. Uh, but I want to encourage you tonight not to be uh, discouraged. Um. Because there in that text, uh, in Galatians, it said, in due season, we shall reap. Uh, that's a good medicine for the problem of discouragement. In due season, we shall reap, which is not only a promise, but it's a divine promise. We shall reap. See, the crop will mature. You will reap. Payday will come. And you may say, well, when will it come? It, it says, there in 6 and 9, it says, in due season. The reaping comes in due season. That due season may seem like forever, but I want to encourage you to hang in there that it will come. Uh, experience will tell us that uh, the better something is, the longer it generally takes to obtain the reward and the result. The better something is, the longer it generally takes to obtain the reward and the result. Listen, cheap things come in a hurry. Corrupt things promise a quick reward sin says why wait do it now and and enjoy it now but the reward uh that comes quickly are not lasting nor satisfactory reward uh so i want you to remember uh tonight that 
and discouragement, Satan uses it. It's one of his uh, uh, tools that he used in his arsenal. In this lesson, we will look at the principles for defeating discouragement. Uh, found in chapter 4 of Nehemiah, uh, here we find the reasons for discouragement. And then we'll also find the remedy for discouragement. See, what I want us to get out of this, this lesson is that I can talk about discouragement but I need to talk about how we can defeat discouragement because we can talk about discouragement over and over, but what can we do then when discouragement comes in our lives? And so that's what we're going to talk about, uh, the reason for discouragement and the remedy for discouragement. Uh, the reason for discouragement. In 586 BC, the Babylonians conquered the southern kingdom of Judah, destroying its capital city, Jerusalem, taking many key people into exile. And our, our lesson here said, what does Nehemiah 1 and 3 tells us about the wall surrounding the sacred city of Jerusalem. Nehemiah 1 and 3, and it says here to, uh, in the B cause, but I'm going to read it all. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And that's Nehemiah 1 and 3. Uh, by the time Nehemiah, by the time of Nehemiah, the city and the wall have been in ruins for more than 100 years. Uh by that time of Nehemiah, the city and the walls have been in ruin for more than a hundred years. Nehemiah gets permission from the Persian king to go back to Jerusalem to oversee the task of rebuilding a wall around the city. And in ancient times, a wall was essential for protection from enemies and 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 often too back then uh if something walls were were made out of different they had different types of walls uh and jerusalem was uh surrounded by hills uh and often if 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 a city was destroyed they rebuilt it in the same place because that was the best place for it that they had already picked. And so uh, here as Nehemiah workers are rebuilding Jerusalem, Jerusalem's broken down wall each day, they came more and more discouraged. Therefore, what does Nehemiah 4 and 10 say what does it tell us about the laborers it says and judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall and this was describing uh the laborers there it said that uh the bearers of burden is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Well, one of the reasons for discouragement, and we see it here, is fatigue caused by discouragement. Uh, this is what meant 
by the strength was decayed. It, it, it comes from being fatigued. Uh, ha have you ever been given out where you was, you were just fatigued, uh, or you were just tired um, physically? Uh, I, I remember uh, in in the army we would have days when we exercise. We call it muscle failure, where we would do as many push ups and many sit ups as you could possibly do to the point where your, your muscles couldn't even respond. Uh, you, you, you were just, you had given out. Um, and so this is what meant by the strength was decayed. Uh, that's what fatigue is. And when we are give out, we get discouraged. When we are tired, we get discouraged. The number one cause of discouragement is physical exhaustion. Is here is what our lesson says. It says the number one cause of discouragement is physical exhaustion. Uh, most of the time when we feel discouraged, it's because we really are tired. Sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is take some time off and go on a vacation. Uh, I, I, I noticed here in the, since the pandemic, I see a lot of, see commercials or whether on the internet, you see where uh, there's a lot of talk of uh, uh, mental health. Uh, um, there There's even apps out and different things. And I hear, see a commercial almost every day that talks about, uh, your mental health and and uh, you know taking care of yourself and because people can get burned out, you can get burned out. And so it, it, it says here, what we can do is take some time off and go on a vacation. Uh, and it says, remember, if you burn the candles at both ends. You aren't as bright as you think you are, and you will get burned in the end. If you burn the candle at both ends, you aren't as bright as you think you are, and you will get burned in the end. See, we can't be spiritually and emotionally high if we are physically low, is what I'm trying to say. We don't need to quit our jobs now and 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 uh disown our kids and things like that's not what I'm talking about. Uh we just need some rest because fatigue can cause discouragement. Uh Jesus told his disciples in Mark, I think it's March 6 and 31, he said, Come ye yourselves apart into the desert place. And rest a while is what he told uh, his disciples. So we see here tonight in the beginning of our lesson, uh, the reason for discouragement. And the first one is fatigue causes discouragement. Uh, we, we can get so burnt out on doing things and then it can actually lead up to discouragement. And again, Satan uses discouragement in order to try and stop you and I from doing what God uh, want us to do. So you got to remember the key to overcoming discouragement is to remember God's promises and apply them to our lives. Uh, when we know the Lord, we can stand upon his promise and he has given his people in his word. Whether or not we see the fulfillment of those promises in our life, his promise still stands. Uh, th this same knowledge kept the apostle Paul pressing forward, preaching the gospel and 
eventually ended up in Roman jail. Uh, he lost his life from prison. He wrote, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that's in Philippians 3 and 14. Um, he could pass through persecution, rejections, beating and discouragement because his eyes were on the ultimate prize. Hearing the words, well done from his Lord and Savior. Uh, we, we easily become discouraged when we seek reward or affirmation from those around us. When we uh, seek rewards from looking for rewards from man, uh, again, man uh, oftentimes won't recognize all of the work that you do. Uh, if you're looking to get uh, a pat on the back is is a lot of times it's not coming, and and so you can get discouraged by looking for affirmation from the people ar around you, and 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 man is is not going to give it to you, and and so you can really be discouraged. But if our service or obedience is based upon uh, uh, immediate gratification, we may be setting ourselves up for discouragement. Uh, Jesus does not always have us to take the easy path. Uh, sometimes we have to take the hard path and we have to have patience. Uh, but God promised that he would be with us and that he would not leave us. Uh, when we have already counted the cost of discipleship, we have more strength to face the battles ahead. Uh, we are not easily discouraged when things don't go our way because we know the battle is the Lord's. And so we need to remember that on this journey uh, that the battle is the Lord's. And I want to encourage you before I close out, uh, don't be discouraged tonight. Um, keep going toward the mark of the high calling. Keep working for God. Uh, it, it, everybody can be, can get discouraged. Uh, but I want to let you know that you're a child of God. Um, that you have the strength through him to keep going. Um, there are going to be some good days and there are going to be some bad days. There's going to be some days where it's going to seem like you can't do anything right. It's going to seem like uh, everything is going wrong. Uh, it's going to seem like uh, no matter what you do, um, how hard you work, you may not get the pat on the back, but I want to encourage you tonight. Don't be discouraged. Uh, God is able. Um, and this can be a discouraging time if you just you look around and see um, what's going on. And it can easily make you discouraged and stop what you're doing. Uh, but I want to encourage you tonight um, and think about God's promises. And that he is in control. And we should be encouraged, not discouraged. And we should actually try to encourage um, one another. Uh, encourage each other because we're going through a trying time. Uh, uh, whatever this outcome is going to be, God is still God. And I, I want to encourage you tonight. Um, don't let setbacks um stop you um again they're only setbacks no, doesn't mean it's gonna it should stop you all together uh it can hinder you but it shouldn't stop you um because we serve a god who is able um and so we're gonna keep studying this week i mean this month on on um discouragement and we uh, talked a little bit about the reason for discouragement. And the first thing we talked about was fatigue. And, and next week, 
Uh, the second thing for the reason of discouragement, we're going to get into uh, frustration causes discouragement. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. And I end it with prayer. A gracious Father, we thank you uh, for this day, Father. We thank you for your many blessings. And Master, we thank you for your word. Uh, Father, in this trying time, Father, we need uh, encouragement, Father. Uh, praying for those who are discouraged tonight uh, to let them know if we are able to see if it's in God's will, tomorrow will be a brand new day. Um, and what happened today will be gone. And Father, we know that you are God and you, you are with us uh, and that you're still in control. And I ask that you just uh, strengthen those who are, are weak tonight, um, those who are, uh, are worried, Father, and, and just burdened down. We're praying for them tonight, Father, that uh, they can give it over to you, be cast to you, Father. Uh, that you are able to handle theirs and mine too, Father. We ask that you just bless all those who will listen tonight, those who may listen later. And, Father, just bless uh, uh, their families and just touch them in a special way. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.